How's it going guys? The live stream is over and we have a bevy of amazing news for you. In the stream you get to see them taking on a legendary contract which actually proves difficult for them. They are playing on the hard difficulty at max level with good gear and even then it seems to be challenging which is nice to see. So how do you get these legendary contracts and what are they exactly? Legendary contracts are a free tiered quest. In order to get these you'll need to build your reputation, your relationship with the differing factions, freelancers, archivists and sentinels. There are more of these factions, but these are the three that was outlined by Emily. Each faction has an agent that you talk to in order to further your reputation and also pick up quests to undergo. Factions will start with basic contracts, but as you grow your reputation with the factions, the quests will improve in rewards and quality and eventually you'll get legendary contracts. It's been confirmed that the contracts will be different per faction. Also on stream, it was showcased that no two contracts will be the same, even if they are titled the same. They are dynamic and objective to keep them fresh. You'll have a main storyline contract that you will undergo as well as daily contracts which will provide you with things to do, defeat enemies, etc. It's a way to keep the game flowing and provide you with things to do daily and they are extremely rewarding. You do get a ton of loot when you finish the expedition, which is basically the legendary contract. Each legendary contract has three tasks or quests you could say. As you complete each quest, difficulty ramps up and eventually hitting max difficulty by the third quest. Pretty cool stuff. What's more, if you do manage to wipe, you don't start from the beginning, but instead you start from the last checkpoint. So if you're on the final quest of the legendary contract, you simply start from that point and you can retry again. So you'll eventually have to get to know the major factions to help you prepare to enter the world of Anthem. So let's go through them one by one. The freelancers are essentially yourself. You are a freelancer and there are a band of freelancers who will basically act as a faction and provide you with quests and things to do. They're the pretty generic kind. Next up we have the Sentinels. The Sentinels are the chief upholders of the law throughout the cities and settlements of Anthem. They believe in justice and order above all else and see themselves as the bulwark protecting the people from the chaos of the outside world. In the eyes of the Sentinel leadership, the freelancers are a ragtag outfit whose fierce independence makes them unreliable. As I said, they're the basic of the basic. Next we have the Corvus, an extensive network of intelligent agents, spies and diplomats. Corvus' main goal is to scout out threats and remove them without direct confrontation. While they are not above having their operatives engage in targeted sabotage or an assassination now and again, they prefer to contract out any of their messier tasks to third parties like the freelancers. Again, bottom of the barrel. Ciphers. Ciphers are humans gifted with and rigorously trained in the ability to communicate mentally over long distances performing complex analytical calculations and processing incredible amounts of information. They serve in support roles to lancers, providing information and analysis during expeditions. And finally, we have the Arcanists. Scientists mystics who have dedicated themselves to researching the mysteries of the world of Anthem. The Arcanists research both the natural frontier as well as the technological. Their ultimate goal is to gather categorize and preserve the complete knowledge of humanity. Their tireless promotion of knowledge and teaching has been directly or indirectly responsible for much of the technological advancement of this world. Really exciting stuff. Will be amazing to see how they shape the world and experience each one of us will get to experience when we finally get the game. At the end of this video I will also be playing a new trailer that they made for us to enjoy. I was gonna voice over but it's done so well I think watching it will do all the justice it needs. For those interested in the stream I'll have a link in the description below and I'll also upload it here on the channel from the point they started so you can get into the meat of the video immediately. With that said, we had a couple confirmations. Loot dropped in the open world. It seems only masterwork and legendary will be mailed to you. Unlike before which we assumed everything would be mailed to you, it is not, only masterwork and legendary. Everything else will be lost. This is done as Ben said in order to encourage interaction and engagement within the game world. And secondly, yes, this was actually a very very requested question, will there be a dab emote in the world of Anthem? The dab emote has been confirmed, it's either there already or in the process of being implemented. So there will be a dab emote for those of you that actually want it. And that's pretty much everything for the stream video. Though I'm not quite there yet at the 5k subs target, I have to say the rush of support has been truly amazing. Please continue to subscribe and support the channel and help it grow. The channel is here only because you amazing people 
who I'm grateful for, are making this all possible. If we can get to 5k subs, I'll do a giveaway for you amazing bunch of people. Thanks again for all the support you've shown me. It means the world to me, and every sub and like the channel and videos get brings me one step closer to realizing my dream. Thanks again, and always, remain legend. Welcome to the Anthem gameplay series. In this first video, we'll take a look at story, progression, and customization. The world of Anthem is a chaotic and ever-changing world abandoned by the Shaper Gods. Humanity survives either in fortified cities or with the use of Javelin exosuits. Javelins are key to your survival by giving you superhuman abilities. Fly, swim, fight, and explore anywhere within the world. That's where you and your friends come in. Part explorer, protector, and adventurer. You are an elite group of pilots called freelancers that are sworn to protect humanity and uncover the mysteries of the world. In the world, the dangers all stem from one mysterious power. The anthem of creation is everything. To control it is everything. Uh, okay, but what could he even do with it? What could he do with the power of life and death, creation and destruction? He would be a god. Imagine all the good that we could do. We decide what's best for the world. The power of pure creation at our fingertips. Your story begins in the middle of this conflict. It will be up to you to head out on missions, silence Shaper ruins, confront enemy factions, and most importantly, ensure that the Dominion do not get their hands on the Anthem of Creation. Before you head out on these missions, you need to prepare your javelin. Unlock four base javelin suits and then build any number of loadouts to customize them for different playstyles. The interceptor is built for speed, lightning fast and incredibly agile to get in and out of harm's way. The ranger is built for precision, highly versatile and ready to unleash firepower. The colossus is built to deal destruction. What it lacks in agility, it makes up for in brute strength and defensive combat power. The Storm is built for extraordinary elemental attacks, devastating power, and light armor. No matter which javelin you choose, your loadout can be customized and augmented to match your gameplay style. Your javelin ability has everything to do with the gear you use. Your gear score is the indication of how powerful your javelin is. Each javelin has the following slots. Two for offensive gear, one for support gear, two weapons, six components, and one ultimate power that is unique to each javelin type. In this case, we have four loadouts ready to go for the Ranger. Each one I've set up for different play styles. Let's have a look at my team support specialist. We are using the Venom Darts and a Frost Grenade for offensive gear. This will be great for applying Ice and Acid status and for setting up combos. For support gear, we are using the Bulwark Point, which places a spherical shield in the battle. For weapons, we have a Hammerhead Assault Rifle and the Semi-Auto Sniper Rifle. One will give medium range damage, while the other allows for fantastic long range damage. For my six components, I have a selection of items that will help keep my weapons at maximum performance. Before you head out, you have a choice on a number of objectives and ways to play. Continue your critical story mission, pick up quests from people in the fort, including your crew, enter one of the formidable strongholds, or explore the open world in free play. Let's start by checking in with Halleck and continue with one of our story missions. She's us in the Dominion now. Good. It's a freelancer job. Always has been. Ready, jump in one? Ready when you are. We've got your back. You go there and you kick some ass. In this first fight, we are going up against the Dominion Fury. The Fury. The Dominion are playing games. Be careful. The Fury hits incredibly hard and will regenerate itself. It will be important to keep moving and use cover or the bulwark point. Two things to remember. Protect yourself and time your attacks to do maximum damage in bursts. The storm is set up for maximum damage using elemental attacks like lightning strike and flaming orb. Its quickening field will reduce cooldowns within its perimeter, 
allowing everyone to use their offensive powers more often. Timing your ultimate attacks with your team will ensure enemies like the Fury won't have a chance to regenerate. Let's head back to the fort. I'll let Tassa know we need to talk. At the end of each mission, head back to the fort. Collect your loot, customize your javelin, pick a new suit, and head out for more. This time, let's enter free play. In free play, the map is open to you to explore the way you want, head in any direction, and discover endless activities and receive missions along the way. Run into other players on the map, or call in a friend when you need an extra set of weapons to take down the deadliest creatures the world has to offer. Here we see the Colossus and Interceptor are opposites in almost every way, making them a great pair in battle. The Colossus is built to be in the middle of the fight with its heavy weapons and durable shield. Taunting enemies with battle cry will keep enemies focused on it. This will allow the Interceptor to charge in and out of the fight inflicting its melee damage without being attacked. Powers like Wraith Strike will send out a shadow version of the Interceptor. Or use the Target Beacon to mark an enemy, then charge in with the Spark Dash to finish it off. In Anthem, build your ultimate arsenal of javelins. Head out into the world and unleash your power. Stay tuned for the next installment that shows you the expanding shared world of Anthem and its massive endgame, including a look at our...